Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture on OCT. In my previous videos, I have discussed about how to read an OCT printout in relation to specifically to glaucoma. But today, we are studying how to read a retinal or uh, to be more specific, a macular OCT printout. So without any delay, let's get started. So over here, we shall be studying basically the cirrus OCT by Zeiss. And under the heading of macular OCT specifically, the most important protocol that we study is the macular thickness protocol, also called the macular cube 512 into 128. Similarly, we shall be studying the various line, uh, line scanning protocols also of the cirrus, whether it is the 5 line raster or a 20 line raster, which is converted into a high definition line scan. So if you're not clear about the various scanning protocols which I shall be discussing now and their printouts, I would advise you first to watch my video on scanning protocols in the OCT scan, which is a, which will have the similar thumbnail as shown over here and you can click the I button which will appear over here. Similarly, there are other uh, protocols also which are specific to glaucoma and these are the RNFL, the optic nerve head and the GCC related protocols which are covered in the video on how to read an OCT printout in glaucoma stepwise. So first let us start with the reading the macular thickness or the macular cube protocol of the Zeiss Cirrus OCD. So this is how the printout actually looks like and we shall be breaking this down into various uh, numbers. You can see the number here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on and so forth till 11 and we are going to study each of them one by one. So the first uh, thing that we see on the extreme left hand side you can see here number one and two these are nothing but these are the line scanning of thalmoscope fundus image so the gray thing is exactly actually the fundus image and then you have this box over here and this box is nothing but it is the thickness profile also called the tomogram so just like in corneal topography or tomography which talks about the surface of the cornea similarly in retina also we have this macular thickness profile also called macular tomogram which will be overlaid and it will be color coded like this in this box okay so this gray image is actually the fundus image and on that gray image you can see one uh, cross like this okay and there is a pink line over here and a, a blue line over here which will actually be taking the horizontal and the vertical uh, beams and subsequently they are going to take uh, specific uh, images which i will telling you in a while so these are called the slice navigators by moving these lines we can actually uh, put our mouse over this and these lines can be moved across sweeped across this fundus image to obtain different oct images at different location and since we are navigating using this particular slices this is called a slice navigator and the image is the fundus image and the colorful uh, part which you can see in the cube inside is the macular tomogram or the macular thickness overlay now after the slo fundus image and the slice navigator we have over here the uh, ETDRS grid which is shown over here. So let us see what is it. The ETDRS stands for early treatment of diabetic retinopathy study grid. So in this grid the same macular thickness which we calculated and let me tell you over here that the cirrusosity will actually calculate the thickness of the macula right from the internal limiting membrane up to the retinal pigment epithelium. So that thickness is actually taken into account and represented in this ETDRS uh, grid. Uh, uh, ETDRS grid actually consists of three circles as you can see the outer circle, the inner circle and the innermost circle. The innermost circle actually represents the central subfield thickness of the macula and then each circle is again divided into four quadrants. So overall you get about nine sectors in this ETDRS grid and all of these are actually representing the thickness of the macula which we actually discover in the patient and then it is going to be con uh, uh, compared with the normative data which is already fed in the machine so normative data is nothing but it is a range of macular, uh, macular thickness that you see in the normal population and that will be compared with the patient parameters and then subsequently we are going to get different colors so green indicates that it is actually the safe zone 
and yellow is moderate and red actually indicates that there is macular thickness and it is the danger zone so you can see over here these are uh, these are the normal parameters and you can see the central subfield has about 220.5 to 294.8 okay this in micron so this is the thickness of the macula in micron similarly the various other sectors and their normal ranges are given in this table now after this uh, ettrs grid we have over here this number four now the number four over in this printout indicates the OCT fundus image. So here again we have an uh, OCT fundus image and this is more of a high definition image. In the previous one we had a fundus image in which uh, the macula was not very clear. We also had an optic disc but here per se it is the macular anatomy which is going to be more clear in this fundus image. Moreover we are going to have a fovea finder. This fovea finder uh, which is represented here actually is an algorithm which is present in the machine itself which is going to help us uh, to find out the exact location of the fovea for the exact placement of the EDTRS grid. So EDTRS grid has to be very properly placed by the machine on the fovea right at the center of the fovea and for that we need proper localization of the fovea for which we have a fovea finder already present in the Cirrus OCD. Now, after that, what we have is the HD cross hairline images of the macula and these are present over here. Okay, these are called the cross line images of the macula. Now, you can have the black uh, black and white images like this or you can have the color coded images uh, like the second picture. So, now what happens is that the first image that is seen here and here, these represents the uh, cross hairline uh, images of the macula taken in the horizontal direction that is and in this picture it is taken from the temporal to nasal and here also it's taken from temporal to nasal as you can see the the direction of the arrow which is seen over here in this box similarly here uh, this pink box which is representing the pink cross line over here which is representing the vertical image which is taken uh, from the macula so this is the vertical cut of the macula and the same will be depicted in the second picture so these are the high definition cross hairline images of the macula now after that let us see what is this image over here on this printout so that is the 3d macular thickness map okay so you can see uh, this macular thickness map which is calculated actually from the internal limiting membrane to the rpe as the thickness is calculated in cirrus uh, ocd from ilm to rpe this retinal thickness is depicted in a topographical display okay so uh, wherever there is thickness you can see it is uh, uh, looking reddish in color the moderate elevations are in, uh, in the uh, yellow color and then the thinner areas are represented in the blue colors after that we have these two pictures over here in the OCT. So what are those? These are the segmented ILM and segmented RPE map. Now this was actually the macular tomographical map, right? So below that the macular uh, tomography map was actually the thickness profile calculated from the ILM to RPE. The other two uh, segmented images which are given here are nothing but they are the segmented ILM and the segmented retinal pigment epithelium. That is you are getting an image of the ILM in a 3d fashion and also of the retinal pigment epithelium so any pathology present in the ilm or in rpe can directly be uh, seen in these segmented images in a glance so if are, there are some drusens present as we know drusens are actually present below the rpe and um, so we can actually see uh, certain elevations or bumps on this rp similarly any problem in the ilm can also be seen on this ilm segmented map after that, we are going to have this number 11 here, which are nothing but the macular parameters. So the macular pr parameters are actually present below the RP segmented map. So you can see over here, this is the uh, uh, table which you see. And the table is actually indicating the central subfield thickness, the average macular thickness and the macular volume. The central subfield thickness is nothing but it is a thickness on the center most part of the EDTRS grid. Whereas the uh, average thickness is the average which is calculated by calculating all the nine sectors of the EDTRS grid. And the EDTRS grid is also calculated from that 
cube uh, calculation of the macular cube as we are talking what we are talking about uh, on that 6 into 6 mm cube so and finally we also have a, a volume of the cube a volume of the macular area which is also calculated and depicted in this macular parameters then uh, these will again be actually uh, compared with the norm, uh, normative data with the normals and you are going to have a color coding so in this color coding also as you can see on the left side of your screen that here uh, there is one person one person seen in less than one percent of the individuals is the red color so red color basically means that it is abnormal because that thickness is seen only in less than one percent of the individual and green zone and yellow zones are actually the safer zones because they are seen in more amount of normal individuals so these are some, uh, the normal values of the macular parameters. You can see the average thickness is about 257 to 295 and represented in green color. That means it is a safer zone or the normal range. More than 295 will be represented basically in uh, either yellow color or it will be uh, in red color depending upon how much is the thickness. And these are the central subfield values, 220 to 294. And the macular volume normally is about 9.26 to 10.62. So these are the normal parameters. Then we also have the line raster scans. And uh, we are talking about the high, uh, high definition five line raster scan. So in this printout of the line raster scan, the first thing what you have is the scanning angle, the spacing between these lines and what exactly is the length of these lines, which is particularly uh, set to about 6 millimeters on default. As I told you in my video on scanning protocols, when you increase the length of this line, the resolution of the image and the resolution of the scan will actually go down. So the first picture over here is the LSO fundus image and you can see those five lines. And these five lines are raster lines as they are parallel to each other and the spacing between them is 0.25. And then there is a selective scanning profile over here and the legend. Legend means that there is a cube over here as you can see and there is a number which is printed on the cube which will tell you which line uh, scan are we seeing in the selective scanning profile. So here number 3 is written and 3 corresponds basically to the blue line which is in between those green lines and that is the image that we are seeing in the selective image profile the remaining four lines and the images can be seen in these uh, boxes one two three and uh, one two four and five then we have an enhanced hd raster single line report in which actually the machine is going to take about five line scans but uh, sorry 20 line 20 uh, lines scan and those 20 scans are actually going to be collapsed into one single line and that single line is called the high definition raster line and the image of that will be depicted in the selective or the pixel profile image and it will be represented the legend will be given as one because there's only one single high definition line which is passing from temporal to nasal and you can see this is the optic disc so this is nasal part and this is the temporal part of the scan so this was about the OCT of the macula and how to read the printout of the OCT of macula I hope it was useful thank you and have a nice day